Welcome to another session from LearnReason.com. My name is Matt. This video is sponsored by HDRefills.com. Hear and feel the difference. Go check them out. You'll be glad you did. In this session, we're going to go over the new dual arpeggio that comes in Reason 9. And like all players, you have to have this device hooked up to an instrument because it plays the instrument. And if we tab around, you'll see that you can't hook up to it. It's just connected to the instrument. And what we have here is two identical arpeggios. And you can turn them on or off with this switch, this, these switches right here, and they are automatable. And you have an on or off to the device right here. And next, what you have is your input range. And the way the input range works is, say, say you, want, you want to set the arpeggio, ARP1, I want to set that to a specific key range. And then only within that key range will the ARP work. So let's, this is set to C2. Let's set it to, I press the key, press the key, C1. So, and then I only want it to go to C2, and then I press learn. So now it will only arp between C1 and C2. But if I press uh, C3, See, everything above C2 will just, it, the, it will just be regular notes, you know? So that's how you can use the input range on each, you know, uh, ARP. You know, that this is where this device will arpeggiate between the notes that you set. And it's as easy as pressing the note that you want and pressing learn on the lowest and, and, and vice versa on the highest. That's how it works. Okay, uh, next you have the repeat, and we'll go over that in a second when we have the steps and patterns turned on so I can show you how that works. Uh, but before we go into these controls here, what I want to show you is this mode that you're in right now with everything off is what you can do with this mode is it allows you to arpeggiate between up to 16 notes. So just you, you don't have to have anything, any of these set, but you can you can set your rate. You can have whether it goes up or down. One note, you know, one octave, two. You know. It will arpeggiate, uh, you know, between one octave or up, you know, up to four. Pretty easy to understand. And now, if you watch up here, you can see that that it's just one note. Now, if I add in another note, you'll see it's going to go two. Add three. Add four. Five and up. I mean, I only have ten fingers. You could, you could, if you know, sixteen. You could arp between in this mode. It will just, it will just go up and back and forth, you know. But you, and then you can set your direction, you know, whether you know. See, it's going down. It's, it's, it's very easy to understand. And that's so. These are these controls, and that with these uh, controls off, this is you can just play as many keys you can hold down or just um, cool our, you know, notes and stuff. And you can have a note range here set here. So we'll have our low note here and I'll uh, arpeggiate between these three notes. And of course you could set your rate and all that. Okay. All that's pretty easy to understand. Next, you have your steps. 
So once you have this on, now now you can set how how far you want it to arpeggiate in steps. So we set it at four. Let's set this up a little higher here. I press a, uh, and it learns it right there. So now I have more of a arp range. And in this mode here, when you have steps on, and if you have four notes hit, uh, four notes down, I'm holding four notes down. If I, the note, the next note I hit, it's automatically going to go from the lowest note, you know, upwards. So, and if you go to one higher, it's going to void the lowest note. So it will only do four notes at one time. So that's how that works. And now, you know, longer uh, range, uh, and that's it. This this square is it, it shows you how it's uh, sequencing. You know how it's stepping through. Now, once you turn pattern on, you can set the the length of each step, either at one third, two third, or a whole. You know, a whole one one is what it would be. And how you do that is is way to the left is going to be you know your uh, one third. If you, in the middle, you're going to be at uh, two third, and then if you click it again, it it gets rid of it. If you go way to the right, that's going to be your your whole one one. And when you, you if you make a note wherever you click, if you click on it, it will get rid of it. Now, if you click now, say I click at the one third, and then I just drag, I can just do a bunch of one thirds. If I don't want them, I can just go back on them. You know. And if I'm at uh, the two thirds, it will just put a two third there. And even when you go down or or you know everywhere you go, it's going to be a two third. It's pretty much it's that simple. And now here you have your velocity, and you can click in here and drag down or up. It's that simple. And then okay, over here you have your your gate length, and this is basically how long the note is going to be held. You know. So if we put a note in here uh, and we press a key, let's uh, let's put this back to this, and this is what we got. See if if, if I make the gate length longer. All the way uh, to 25, and then it's going to be little stabs. So that's your gate length. Transpose just brings it up. That's what transpose does and shift what it does is it it shifts where the arpeggio you know it shifts the steps forward or backward where it starts see it's starting two ahead every time let's go to three now it's going to start here Go up one more, we'll start right there. Four. So it's basically shifts where the arpeggio starts within the steps that you have uh, laid out. That's all that does. Okay, so to to, to to you know to get rid of all these, just click in it and it and then drag left. Like if you have one here, you don't want to come back here and do it. What you need to do is click in it and then drag. So in other words, if one's there, you click on it and it, and it erases it. 
That's important to know. Okay, the repeat, when you have the repeat on, what it does is it repeats each note generated in the arpeggio. So each note is being played back twice at the set rate. So the total length of the arpeggio will be twice as long. So let's listen to it. Let's do a higher one. Now, now we'll, we'll repeat it. You see how slow it's going here? It, it's just, it's, it's actually kind of doubling up the rate in a way. In other words, you're getting more notes in a shorter uh, uh, range. So it's kind of like, it's doubling it. Now, turn the repeat off. So that's what repeat does. It's, it's really that simple. It doubles it up. Now, what is the purpose of having the two? And really what, the, what this does is it allows you to like have your left hand or lower notes doing a different sequence and the higher notes doing a different sequence. That's one of the things you can do. And if you go through some of the presets, you know, you can see what they all are. But I, what I'm going to do is show you a couple that are cool. And I'll just, we'll just make them. So I'll just reset this. And we have this. So what I'm going to do is set my, um, I'm going to turn on the ARP 2. And I want it to just do low notes. So that low. And I'll, I'll be to here. So this ARP will only ARP between these, you know, all this all the low uh, from C2 down and then from so I'll set the top R to C3 to C8 so in between C2 and C3 these th those notes don't R So I have higher notes here. Now I can have the lower notes here and I'll just set those to like force. See, you see what I'm getting at here? You can have different sequences and everything and start coming up with these killer arpeggio uh, sequences. And that's, that's how you would do something like that. Now, I'll show you a couple cool things. Here's a, uh, here's a, uh, a patch I made. And we can get rid of this one. Yeah, and it would be just be this one. So that's just by te screwing around with the the rate, and that's just a four. Uh, no, that's a it's a three. That's a three bar uh, a three note sequence. So that's the dual arpeggio in, in Reason. I mean, it's really easy to run, really easy to use. And of course, you can, you can automate a, almost all these controls. And also, you can direct record and send a track. And I showed you how to do that in the other two uh, uh, player tutorials. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And so that... That's the dual arpeggio. I mean, I, I just really love this thing. It's super easy to use, but it's really um, having the two here really allow you to come up with some really cool arpeggio chord progressions. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial. And remember, the way you can help me out 
is to like, follow, share, and subscribe. Take care, everybody.